on April 29, 2021, a major agriculture policy shift happened in Sri Lanka. President Gotabaya Rajapaksha announced that Sri Lanka will turn into the first organic only economy in the world. In one fell swoop, Sri Lanka's government banned chemical based farming in the country. And then this happened. Sri Lanka mein aarthik sankat gaharata ja raha hai. Logon ko zaruri saman nahi mil raha. Khane peene ki cheeze itni mehangi ho gayi hai. Rajapaksha Sri Lanka is going through its worst economic crisis. There are protests, cabinet resignations, the president himself is desperately trying to hold on to power. This mayhem that the country is going through has been squarely blamed on the shift to organic farming. But is this the case or did the economy collapse because of a series of blunders that have been going on for years with the shift to organic being the last nail in the proverbial coffin? Let us rewind back to about 60 years ago when the green revolution first emerged in Sri Lanka. Around 1965, Sri Lanka began experimenting with synthetic fertilizers and hybrid seeds to increase its food production, especially rice. The results in Sri Lanka, like the rest of South Asia, were startling. Towards the end of the 20th century, rice production had almost tripled. The country became food secure. Export of tea and rubber became critical sources of foreign reserves. While the use of chemicals improved productivity, there were also concerns about soil, environment and human health. A movement comprising academics and civil society began to grow with a demand of going back to organic farming. This movement was called Vyatmaga. Sensing an opportunity Sri Lanka's president Gotabaya Rajapaksha made organic farming a poll promise as part of his 2019 election campaign. And on April 29th, 2021, he kept this poll promise by ordering the country's 2 million farmers to go organic overnight. In April of this year, the government of Sri Lanka banned the import of artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and we decide so why did rajapaksha decide to go organic it was not that he believed that organic farming could feed sri lanka's population but because he wanted to save foreign exchange bills on imported fertilizers sri lanka imports all its fertilizer from mainly china and india at that time the total cost of fertilizer imports and subsidies was also close to 500 million This may not look like a huge amount but according to the World Bank Sri Lanka's foreign reserves stood at around 5.7 billion in 2020 this meant Sri Lanka was spending roughly 10% of its reserves in importing fertilizer then in 2020 covid-19 happened the bill was already straining the country's reserves but the pandemic almost emptied it out Tourism contributed close to 478 million dollars in 2018 which fell to 50 million dollars in 2020 since um, the covid pandemic happened uh, sri lanka's uh, production become very very low because uh, our our main income was coming from uh, one is the tourism sector uh, so tourist industry completely lost within the last two years um and then the the migration workers who were working in the middle east so they were unable to send money and also the production lines uh, the uh, garment sector uh, and the tea production all of them uh, affected very much during the covid time um and when they found that the the dollar um uh, is not adequate for the importation of this chemical fertilizer they suddenly decided to stop importing chemical fertilizer and on that moment they have decided that that we will go to the organic agriculture um and which was almost overnight and, and uh, it, they didn't have adequate uh, foreign uh, reserves to import the fertilizer Similarly, Sri Lankan economy is dependent on export of items such as tea, rubber, coconut, spices and garments, which contribute close to a quarter to its GDP. 
Since 2012, there has been a slowdown in exports of these goods. Sri Lanka is also saddled with a mammoth external debt of nearly $45 billion. According to Sajid Premadasa, the leader of Sri Lanka's opposition, close to $8 billion of this debt is from China. A lot of this debt was for projects that could have been money spinners for the country. But many of them became non-starters, like the Hambunota port, for which Sri Lanka took $1.2 billion from China. But Sri Lanka could not run the port and repay its loan to China. It renegotiated the loan and handed the port to China on a lease for 99 years. Um, I think uh, the current uh, regime is thinking that China as the sole uh, solution provider uh, when, it, when they don't have the money, when, when they don't have the money for infrastructure building, when they don't have uh, rice or, or fertilizer, uh, problem, so they always try to get these Chinese companies to get involved because there's too there's too much Chinese intervention in Sri Lanka. At the same time, they want to balance with India, and and they they use some of those products coming from India, some other products coming from um, China. So that's how they 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 try to balance. Sri Lanka's economic crisis was not a result of organic farming, but poor economic policies. When the Rajapaksha government announced the shift to organic, less than 3% of Sri Lanka's farmland was farmed without chemicals. The country needed time to change and adjust to the organic way of farming. They also needed support and good organic substitutes to smoothen the transition. Bhutan, for example, announced in 2008 that it will become fully organic by 2020. Bhutan is yet to achieve that target. As for Sri Lanka, the impact of a series of poor economic policies, sheer short-sightedness and a heavy reliance on foreign funds will hurt the 20.1 million Sri Lankan population for years to come. <laughs>